Well, so here we are. This is this is our kitchen. Yeah. We're sitting here at our kitchen table, mm -hmm. we just got up, and uh, actually we've been piddling around, taking kind of all all care, kinds of different things, try, yeah, yeah. trying to get started. Yeah, we had a lot of fun cleaning up this morning. Trying to make the plunge, because uh, we're making a road trip here, and uh, we're gonna. It's kind mm -hmm. of a, a leap of faith. Yeah, yeah. Into the unknown. Yeah. Uh, so so journey with us as as we we move on into to something that we just don't understand or don't know anything about or something. Yeah. I yeah. think my job actually is to prepare the drinks in the sack, ready. Well, I packed us wow. a, a picnic basket. Which First my class. Favorite thing, devil's food. Well, this isn't the brand name I like, but I guess it'll do. And some grapes and some nutty bird sandwiches and dill Havarti sandwich, or cheese, and then some other stuff is in there. We're gonna um, take some glasses and, and some, some hot damn schnapps, and uh, oh, this would be really good, some, some rum. And, uh, God, you never know when someone's going to get a cold. You might want some vitamin C tablets. Yeah, uh, but you're cooking something here. Is that something for the trip? No, this mm, is... That looks good. This is the fact... I'm feeling nauseous and... Um, from all that medicine. From all that medicine. And so I have to um, uh, prepare something before. Now, I know I said nauseous and I'm a newlyweds so of some of you out there that are thinking I know what you're thinking well morning sickness yeah it's it's not true because um, I got my monthly bill in the mail if you know what I mean okay so I'm getting prepared here for our little venture Man, um, you are getting prepared yeah yeah I know it's only a day but but uh, you know it's important to to make sure that you're prepared just, just like the proverbial boy scout um, now what uh, what what we're gonna put in here um, well, we're, we're not really sure exactly what. I know that one thing that's going to go in is the bartending guide. Tequila would work, yeah. Um, some wine, that'll be good. Never, don't ever forget your cigarettes. Your cigarettes are important. Another thing is, you know, I mean, we're, you know, preparing to go, and I packed the lunch and stuff, but with that new yeast infection that I have, I was able to bake our own bread, so... I right think there in the oven. Yeah, and of course, the proverbial toilet paper and napkin series for a... <laughs> You never know when someone's going to make a mess. That should be enough, I think, but I'm going to go check inside to see if there's anything else we might just need. It's much better. Looking good, Jay. Yay! Apocalyptic party with your new disaster dress. You've been around, you wrecked it down, you let my life a mess. You wrecked it up, me, and now I feel so depressed. Have you seen our television show? I don't uh, watch television, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you. I don't believe in it's it. It's a stupid box. <laughs> yeah. do, do you own a television? Uh, my wife owns a television, so yeah. Yeah. I don't own one myself. So do you even watch all your basketball games? Nope. The problem here appears that there are all these you know 43s, what? 54s, 45s. You know, we're in Cincinnati. We're in Cincinnati right now. You know what? We can... we're gonna, we want to go three to five miles short of Salisbury, it appears here. So we may Is that right? Salisbury. Because you go past Salisbury going south on 43. You're supposed to, in the general store in Salisbury. Yeah, just follow this road right here down. Uh, right straight uh, east here, west rather. It's not very far. It's seven or eight miles down there. 
but you'll notice it sets off on the lid. You can't miss it. Mm -hmm. You don't see this in New York, something to warm up your hands by. I think it's time to get on the road again. Now once I was enchanted by your shiny silver skin. I so bright like you and tight, you'll go to quit and grin. My union it was sweeter than it ever should have been. traffic for the country, but this is an important place. This is one of the, something like the longest railroad trestle in North America or something like that. It's a, a big old place and, and there's lots of people here trying to figure out uh, what to do. Um, so, uh, like you. Yes, like me. So what are you going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to go climb up on there and take a leap of faith. So I'm prepared for this journey. I've brought all of my important stuff in order to uh, make this thing happen. I even used my big no monstrous backpack to make sure that I was wow. prepared in every way You're because I'm really a funky ready. young prepared something guy. Well, I'll put some, yes. Dr. Strings untied though. Oh, oh yeah. 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 These. Um, I think this one kind of goes over here and That ties around this. your tie, doesn't it? Yeah, it yeah. A tie. it's a tie clip. A tie tie. Yeah, in case you're, you're hiking on the trail Watch and you're wearing a tie. Climbing to the top because you know you have to go up to come down and uh, we're gonna take our leap of faith, you know, leap of faith, the theme of this episode. You remember that, right? You're not too drunk yet. Good. Ascending to the peak. 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 So I'm really afraid of heights. I'm just a classic textbook case of being afraid of heights. And I just freaked myself out really bad. Is your bad. heart all a flutter? I just... So, we're going to mix a drink out here. And uh, I've brought all my special wares. As I told you before, I'm highly prepared for this whole experience. And, uh, and you can bet that, that it's going to be something you will not forget in your entire long life. So, um, what we're going to do, I brought a cup, and uh, this drink is, is going to be called, what's it going to be called? A vanishing point? This drink is going to be called a vanishing point, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unload this monstrous backpack that I brought here. Um, let's see here, okay. All right. Well, there's a sandal that I brought. Um, wow, it's a good thing you got that. Oh, okay, and a headrest. Yeah, I brought my headrest. Um, gosh, and a cowbell and, and a knife. Um, okay, well, we brought the cowbell in case, uh, in case we had some kind of... Well, hmm. Here's a stringer, and there's a, a pocket pal harmonica in here. Wow. Hmm. I seem to have forgotten to bring anything that I needed for this drink. Um, Where's the, where the alcohol? 
So, you know, um, seeing how Joe is usually not Jay. prepared for these kind of things, I decided to bring my own little stash of things, so I'm going to make my own little drink. So here we have a Coke, and I brought um, some orange juice, and gosh, we'll see what else did I bring. Oh, I brought some tequila. Wow, that looks like urine. Some rum. Looks like more and, urine. And uh, I'm so embarrassed yeah. about my failure to bring anything that you're welcome to have your hand at it. Thanks. Gosh, let's try some. Let's try a, a, a vanishing point. Let's put in about mm, halfway full of. Let's try some rum. Okay. Halfway full of rum. Just whatever kind of cup you've got. Just fill it halfway with rum. Okay. Yeah. Let's put some of that in there. It's not exactly halfway, is it? Well, from my perspective, it is. And just fill the rest of it up with some Coke. So it's kind of like a rum and Coke, except um, it's a little bit different. Except yeah. it's made on a trestle. Yeah, mm. with a vanishing point behind. I would pronounce that as distinctly woozy. Well, you know how J and B came unprepared? Well, being the Girl Scout that I am, I just, you know, I mean, I didn't earn these badges for nothing, baby. Let me tell you, see that one? See that? The outdoor badge. That's right, baby. Unlike men, you see, uh, they, they compete just about anywhere. But girls, we have to be extra prepared because we're girls. And so, um, black and white harmony. Remember that little lesson of love. Yes. So we have to be doubly prepared. So we actually, you know, we can't just pee anywhere. We have to find a good spot. And we actually, we can't just drip dry. That's kind of um, um, just annoying and kind of damp, and that leaves you a little uh. bit. You always have to bring a roll of toilet paper. It's important That's right. to stay prepared, especially... And stay fresh. Let's go! The Girl Scouts, we reward with badges, and that provides incentive. And that's why we're capitalists, because we feel that, you know, incentive, helps everyone, you know, do just better in society. So, yeah. you know, you 4-H people and you're... Listen, we're a little bit more socialistic in our views. I, we feel that everyone needs to find their own merit, their own personal merit within themselves. And we don't need any incentive, any stupid badge to find any, you know, any personal fulfillment in what we do. Well, I just don't understand that because, I mean, why would you do it if you didn't get a badge? I mean, you know what I mean? And then you could collect them and trade them and stuff? Due to changes in the uh, Federal Disabilities Act, the, uh, the government was forced to make a, uh, a wheelchair ramp, actually, up to this uh, railroad trestle. And we are walking down that ramp right now in order to go meet our friend Andrew part way. Because, you know, uh, in, in, in these modern times, it's important for, for all people to have access to all places. And so uh, they have, have provided that for him as a public service. So uh, hats off to the federal government for that. Wow, here they come up the wheelchair ramp supplied by the federal government at the uh, the railroad trestle site. Just because Andrew is an American, not an American. This trestle's listed, <laughs> this trestle's listed <laughs> as accessible because of this ramp. Yeah. The government provided that speed ramp just to make sure that <laughs> well, well, so, so, so the handicapped people speed can't speed, down. down. right? Yeah. It, That's right. It slows me down. Log jam. Log jam in the in the old wheelchair. Proverbial filibuster log jam. Well, I was applauding the government for their uh, wheelchair oh, wait, ramp before, but I I see that uh, this is the Bob Dole of uh, handicapped hill right here. The yeah. Bob Dole gets in the way of things. Gridlock yeah. Every right time. here. Every time. Filibustering. Filibustering on Jam B on the Rock. I'm going to undress and do this naked um, because, you know, in order to take a leap of faith, you have to strip yourself of your former ideas and thoughts and possibilities. You're going to be naked as a gay bird. Uh. Hey, Christy, can you... Okay, yeah. Well, there they go. <laughs> hey, j and B, if you guys really are into this leap of faith stuff, you should be able to make Mr. G here walk. So let's see that. Well, we can do that, sure. Yeah, Come yeah, on over here, yeah, Jay. Right. Get over on that side and I'll get over on this side. Uh, First, putting from the, other the bungee guys. cord shall be removed. The Lord saith, remove thy bungee. <laughs> Mr. G, yes. are you ready to take a leap of faith? I, I am, Brother Bart. Well, then rise up and stand. <laughs> stand! 
Stan, my man. Stan, oh. Mr. T. He's Stan. Man. Look yes. at that, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he's standing. He's, it's all on his own. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Send your money to post office box. Three, three, two, four, one. I Bloomington, Indiana. Well, no, there. Oh. no money. We're just no joking. Money. Yes. I used no. to be no flat fly chest now. jumping. And then they, J and B were so nice that they gave me a breast implant. I mean, they'll just do anything. They're miracle workers, I swear to God. For joy. He's jumping for joy because he's been healed. Yay. Mr. G, Mr. G, being yeah. healed is tiring work, isn't it? It is. I'd rather be sitting there. Yeah, Maybe, well, he's going to sit, sit down, down just not, to rest. Not that at all. Oh, look at that. There. There. Oh. So this next drink that we're going to be making is called a leap of faith. Now, obviously, we've been talking about this as the theme of our episode all along. So, um... It shouldn't be surprising you that you we would make something, pissed. yeah, that we'd make something like this. Yeah. Um, what, what we want to do is take some of this tequila, which which has been packed in this uh, sanitary and uh, tightly lidded container um, for the trip. You'll want to add about an ounce and a half or two ounces to your glass. That looks like about enough. The next thing we're going to add is uh, about a half an ounce of this hot cinnamon schnapps. Um, and, uh, you know, so the leap of faith, of course, being the idea that... Uh, that you know you you have to take a leap of faith you have to just believe in order to know that god exists it's yeah. it's really a silly silly idea but it's the basis of all um uh god oriented ideology so you have you have to believe before you can believe yeah exactly so um so uh we are going to add about uh, four or five ounces of orange juice to this drink uh that noise you're hearing in the background by the way is the train approaching oh goodness That's, um what train Oh, we're on, are we on, oh, goodness, we're on some tracks here. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're out here in the middle of this, uh, this, this monstrous railroad trestle, the longest railroad trestle in the United States or something like or that. Indiana, Indiana or Indiana or the something, world. Some, yeah, something like that. The planet and, Mars. Uh, it's actually, 172 feet tall, I, I know that. Yeah, it's probably five-eighths of a mile long. Actually, I'm going to sip this and then leap off of the side of the trestle um, because it will, and thereby prove my belief in God. So here we go. We're going to taste this fine beverage. Don't get out on it yes. because it's still in use and there's no place, there's no walk-offs on it. Mm. You know what I mean? Faith. This week's vocabulary word is faith. Over the course of Christian history, faith has come to mean many things. One, loyalty to God, based on God's prior loyalty to us. Two, confidence that God is trustworthy in truth and love. Three, dependence on the Father of Jesus Christ, who is the source of all good things. Four, commitment to direct thought and action in accordance to the divine word. Five, affirmation that certain events and declarations as given by divine revelation are a reliable index of the divine will. We question these traditional definitions of faith and wish to suggest our own, which reflect the reality of our own lives. One, loyalty to our circle of friends and lovers, firebrands, dropouts, and drug dealers who are there for us when we need them. Two, confidence in our own ability to make a happy life together without assistance from above. Three, the interdependence of ourselves, our community, our environment. Four, commitment to direct thought and action in the struggle to wrest control of our own lives from the rigid capitalist bullshit that we find all around us. And five, affirmation that our own skeptical, cynical, critical faculties are the best and only lights we have and that as fallible as we are, we must have faith in ourselves. So oh. it's B with the camera. It's J with, with the, the car. car. Yes, and uh, it's, it's time for us to return to um, our little uh, home in Bloomington at that in undisclosed location. So I guess we'll be uh, seeing you some other time. As you can see, by the way, I've lost everyone else. Um, they've just kind of disappeared along the way. I think they may have fallen off of the trellis, made the uh, trestle, trestle, oh uh, made the uh, the proverbial leap of faith into the unknown. And uh, actually, as far as that goes, let's uh, just leap on into the evening um, by saying goodbye. So, bye bye.
close up. It's B with the video camera. It's J with the car. Gosh. Again, I guess this show isn't over yet. No, it's not. It's Watch not this. We got some viewer mail here. October 20th, 1993. Dear J, comma, dear B, comma. As a regular viewer of your, geez, this is long. <clears throat> As a regular viewer of your little program, I was always amused and entertained by your shenanigans. However, you touched on a premise in last, last night's episode, October 19th, show number 40, that is currently foremost in my thoughts. We need a new God. It is high time that we as a culture give birth to a new deity. I have an idea that I am currently in the process of copywriting, but I am willing to share, at least intellectually, if not financially, with you and your viewers. The human race has been clinging to the idea of one true God, with a couple appendages in some cases, for about 2,000 years. I feel it is time for us to go back to the team concept of worship. That is to say, multiple gods, lowercase, who each control certain aspects of the human condition. This is not a new idea, of course, but it has been quite a while since its use, and it fits in with your current theme of the eternal return, episode number 40, October 19th. Who will these gods be? Well, popular culture in the last century has supplied them in ample supply, and humans have already begun the lengthy process of deification. My new stable of gods would consist of, one, James Dean, god of rebellion and reckless youth, and famous Hoosier. I added that as an editorial comment. Um, he would also be responsible for puberty and transportation. <laughs> Number two, Marilyn Monroe, goddess of love and lust. She would also answer for personal appearance, including cosmetology, hairstyling and fashion, and hygiene. Three, Martin Luther King Jr., god of freedom and public speaking. Four, John F. Kennedy, god of chivalry and recreational sex. <laughs> Five, Malcolm X, god of righteous anger and merchandising. Michael Jordan, god of athlete, athletics and footwear. Seven, George Patton, god of war. Eight, Jacques Cousteau, god of the sea. Nine, Johnny Carson, god of entertainment and marriage. And ten, Eight. Nancy Reagan, goddess of mor morality, etiquette, family, and bloodlust. These ten deities would vie for power and position just as the gods of ancient, ancient Greece, Nancy Re Reagan being the big, biggest troublemaker, they can never, however, unseat the king of the gods, Elvis Aaron Presley. Yes, Elvis. I know that Elvis is hackneyed and played out as a cultural icon, but hear me out. In order for the populace to accept my new heavenly order, I must instill as much familiar, uh, as much familiar spiritual recognition as I can. Since most of today's deities, Jehovah, Jesus, and Allah, for example, spring from the house of David, I have unearthed evidence that Elvis Presley is a direct, in a, is a direct bloodline descendant of King David of Israel. This evidence is copyrighted and may not be publicly displayed until my book and video series come out. Also, people are res resurrecting him f for me with Burger King and 7-Eleven sightings. This is how Jesus' PR people broke, broke him big amongst the pagans. Elvis is the most logical choice, and he dressed the part. I envision complete scenarios with intricate interaction amongst the gods. Marilyn Monroe sleeps with JFK, but she dumps him for Michael Jordan. Nancy and Patton try to frame Martin Luther King, but Malcolm X thwarts the plan. You get the picture. There will also be lesser demigods who help or hinder the major gods. Jim Morrison, Anwar Sadat, Roy Kahn, Cohn, uh, Greta Garbo, Gandhi, who may get elected to the godhood. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover, etc., will all be returning characters in this mythology. This will all be fleshed out in the coming months, maybe with the help of you or your viewers. But remember, I own the rights. Yours in spirit, Maynard Schmagtite. <laughs> well, certainly Maynard uh, deserves his own godhood just based on his, his uh, interesting um, name. Funny. Yes, funny name. Uh, now that was a letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to think. You know something? They left, they left one character out of the deity, uh, out of the pantheon. I'm afraid to say. Jay. Is that close? <laughs>